when I heard the word local, I'm like, I'm already doing that. <laughs> uh, been in my present location, my studio with my wife and family for about 17 years. And our main focus to get out of the city and move to where we are is to become really in tune with local materials. I work with um, hay and straw, cattails, um, any trees, everything has a different mineral content and depending on where it's growing it will actually take up from the ground different minerals also. So when you burn that down to its essence, its ash, it's a whole palette of colors. I pitched this idea that, that it would be interesting to get local companies mm -hmm. to team up with local artists to produce work that neither the artist nor the company would typically produce on their own. My initial meeting with Andy kind of cemented the deal. He was enthusiastic about the project and willing to help in any way he could. The fact that I don't have to hardly concern myself with, you know, getting materials that I need, they, they oftentimes will cut it for me. They've been uh, very accommodating. When they see what you what you've actually made, they're surprised because they they only see whatever it is they normally make on a day-to-day -day basis. And so if you come in with something they've never seen before, never contemplated, and maybe it's not something that they could actually make money off of, it's unusual and unique and special. And so I think they their curiosity is peaked from that. Today I just picked up from Bloxham Company at 80 pounds of cork. And I'm actually gonna burn that and then make collect it as ash. And then what I do is I take that dry ash and screen it. Here's some of the local clay I'm digging out of our, from our property. And basically I just crush it, get it pretty dry, and I have, to, I have to screen it. So see how this is more powdery. And then this is the core that we just saw burning. And the test I ran for this particular load was a 50-50, equal parts of each. Okay. And then that's what this is. This is just a, uh, with water added to it. But this needs to be kind of the consistency of like thick milk. So then it can go on to the pots. I, I do a lot of, it's called throwing on the wheel. So that's the process of making functional work. So I make a lot of cups and bowls and plates and uh, teapots. That's my kind of my bread and butter. There's a big movement afoot towards locally sourced products. It's, it's good to explore, first of all, what, what is available locally, but it just makes sense to use products that are available locally. I've got a friend with a tree service who needs to just dump truckloads of wood somewhere to get rid of it. It's a waste product to some people, but to me, I turn it into firewood. This is our all the firewood we need for the studio and the house and firings for a year. I turn it into heat for my family. We cook with it. We have ovens, bread ovens and pizza ovens. We cook, we heat that. So it's, it becomes this bigger picture that I think most people don't even realize is out there. And then this is actually where all the, where all the fire goes in to heat the kiln. So it, this gets preheated with charcoal for about overnight basically. And then I get up super early in the morning and just start stoking these larger chunks of wood here. Then basically this is just all these bricks we brick up to seal it. Once the pots are in, we seal the door up and then we start the firing. A lot of times in, in this global society that we live in, we forget what is available in our neighborhoods and in our own backyard. So I think um, it's, it's good to focus on it, even if it takes a special exhibit to do it.